Hi everyone and welcome to And So On. My name is Lisa Kish and I'm coming to you today from a very blustery day here in Toronto, Canada. Uh, today in this video, I'm going to cover capsule wardrobes specifically for makers. It's been coming up a lot lately on social media. I'm seeing it all over Pinterest and all over the blog world and I absolutely love this idea. So I wanna share with you what is a capsule wardrobe? How does one go about doing that? How does it apply to makers? And then at the end of the video, I'm going to tell you what I'm choosing to make for October. So capsule wardrobes. Now, if you put it into Google, put it into Pinterest, you're going to get a million different ideas of making a capsule wardrobe. But the main idea of it is that you look at your wardrobe and you really bring it down to the clothes that you love, that you open your your cupboard and it's the things that you just love and want to wear every single day, right? How many of us have huge closets with packed, packed the gills and you open up it every morning and you just, I've got nothing to wear, right? I'm sure pretty much all of us have thought that at one time or the other. So for me, the idea of creating a capsule wardrobe, which some people think, oh, that must be minimalist. Like you must be wanting me to get rid of half my closet. Minimalism certainly can partner with a capsule wardrobe, but it's not the most important part. Um, I became interested in this earlier this year. My family and I took a seven month trip abroad. We left in January, we pulled the kids out of school and we visited 11 countries over seven months. We didn't get back until the beginning of August. And during that time, we traveled with one suitcase and four carry-ons in our backpacks. So a family of four traveling on that little we really had to just pick a few of our really favorite clothes that we wanted to wear over and over again. We would often let go of clothes when they became out of season or the kids had grown out of them. If we wanted to buy something new, we had to get rid of something old because we just didn't have the room to carry it. And we learned very quickly that you don't actually miss your stuff. You really don't. You, you enjoy the things that you have, but you learn that we don't need half the stuff that we have, right? We just don't need it. And the time and money it takes to house, purchase, look after all of our stuff, when really the most important things in our lives are the people and the experiences around us. So through that experience, I really came to, when I came back to Toronto and walked into my house and I thought, oh my gosh, this, first of all, this place is huge. Why do I need a, a three bedroom, three level house? Um, not that I'm selling my house anytime soon, but I did realize that, wow, like, do we really need this, this much space? And uh, I did not want to go back to drowning in stuff. And so as we started unpacking, I, myself and my kids and my husband, we were really mindful of as we were unpacking something, deciding whether it still was important to us, if we still really loved it before we put it back into the space. I am not a neat person. I'm a pretty messy person. <laughs> I'm a lot better than I used to be, but I'm pretty messy. And so for me, a capsule wardrobe is a little bit about, if not minimalism, reducealism. <laughs> I want to I wanna reduce a little bit because I find it's easier for me to keep my space neat and tidy if there's less in it. And when my space is neat and tidy, I feel less stressed and more relaxed and I can just enjoy my time. So I, the first thing that I did when I was starting to think about a capsule wardrobe is as I unpacked my fall clothes, and maybe you're at the point where you're unpacking some fall winter stuff, maybe you're already there. I only unpacked from the bins of, of fall winter clothes, probably about a third of it. I went through and I only picked my five favorite sweaters, my five favorite pairs of pants, my five favorite skirts. The number doesn't really matter. The, the, the point is to just look at it and go, okay, what do I love? What do I really, really love? And put that in your closet. And what I've already discovered, and it's only been a couple of weeks, is half the stuff I've hung up in that closet, even though it's a fraction of what I had the year before or two years before that, I haven't worn half of it. Interesting, right? So how does this apply to us as sewists, as makers? Well, while I was away, one of the only like possessions that I really missed was my sewing machine. I was just dying to get back and start sewing. And so when I came back, I just bought a bunch of fabric and bought a bunch of patterns and started sewing, 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 sewing. And I didn't really take the time to think, okay, what do you need? What do you want? Um, and I, I wasn't strategic about it. And 
the same way as I don't want to just go to the mall and buy a bunch of things because they happen to be 50% off and they may be cute and not really think about it and not be mindful about it. It's the same thing with making. I really want to be mindful and authentic um, as a maker. And I want to look at my wardrobe and really figure out what am I going to wear? What am I going to use? Because the only thing worse than, you know, not using something you spent your money on is not using something you spent your money and time on. <laughs> right? So I love the idea of be of mindful practice in your life and mindful practice in your making. So the blog randomly, randomly happy, that's what it's called the randomly happy blog. Elena has done a great um, series of blog posts on a maker's capsule wardrobe and she's continuing to do that and she started the hashtag maker capsule and I'll put that below and she has this great free printable here let's see if I can get it so it focuses that is like a worksheet a two-page worksheet for you to figure out um, maybe some things that you want to focus on making next so what this worksheet does is it takes you through what I see as three steps number one identifying what you do in a day. What are your activities in the week, right? So for me, I work from home, so I need a lot of comfy clothes. And then sometimes I have meetings outside of the house, but they're not fancy, they're not businessy. It's more smart casual, upscale casual, that kind of thing. So I want, you know, something that will that will make me feel like I look chic and I look pulled together, but not overly formal or businessy. So second is to identify what you wear during each of those activities that make you feel great, that's your go-to, that you can grab it and you know you're gonna look great, and maybe things that you wear that you're not as comfortable or you're only wearing it at an obligation because you spent money on it and you wanna get your money's worth. You know, there's all different things around that. So for me, I noticed that the things I do wear, I wear, you know, skinny jeans and a cute top. So I like to wear, it's like very simple, right? This is not rocket science. <laughs> Um, I like to be comfortable and cozy. So I often find when I'm making lists of what I want to make, it's like sweater dress, sweater dress, turtleneck, turtleneck. Cozy and warm is is what, what I really want. Now, in terms of things that don't work as well on me, one of the main thing I've noticed is I don't wear t-shirts or sleeveless anything in the in the fall and winter. I really don't. And I know you can put a cardigan over it or whatever, but my arms are always cold and even though I have the intention to wear it, I just don't. I pretty much want to just be encased in knits from now until April. <laughs> so, um so I've noticed that. So that's a couple things that I think I'm going to take out of my closet and put, you know, put aside. I'm not going to get rid of it yet. I'm going to put it aside, put it in a bin and and reevaluate in a couple of months. So, and then I looked for the holes. So what are the things that I need to then move forward, right? And maybe those are holes that you're going to fill with purchases. Like I'm not going to start making boots. <laughs> so, I'd like to get a nice pair of heeled boots. I'm not going to start making boots, okay? So that's going to be a purchase. But for me, I'm deciding to make the things that are the holes in my wardrobe right now. I'm committing to not purchasing any clothes at retail for the next for the foreseeable future. I'm going to I haven't bought anything in a in a store since July. I'm going to try and do a year. Now that's not to make anyone feel bad or put pressure on anyone and it, it, what it is is for me if I make that rule for myself, then number one, I push my sewing skills and number two, I don't impulse buy. And that's a dangerous one for me. So I'm putting that on myself. The caveat to that is I am going to allow myself to buy from thrift stores because I do love thrift shopping. And again, that's something where I have to go out and do it purposely. I'm unlikely to just be out somewhere and buy something at a thrift store. So after you've gone through all that, after you have identified what your activities are, identified what you wear for those things, what makes you feel good, what you actually don't really like even though it's been hanging in your closet forever, um, and what the holes are, how does that translate into what you're going to make um, as a sewist this month? So for me, I'm picking the things that are the most obvious holes for me and I'm going to fill those first. So this doesn't mean that I'm not just going to make something glorious just for fun that has very little practical value. That's about being an artist, right? That's what a sewist is. It's a sewer who is also an artist, a sewist. So sometimes I'm going to make something just for the love of it, but uh, I also want to be practical as well. So there's a few things that I have identified that I'm going to make this month. Number one is I need a new pair of comfortable pants that still look smart and polished. I've got lots of jogging pants that I can wear around the house, but I need a pair of pants that I can just grab, throw on, um, throw on a cute top and 
feel put together and polished. So I am going to buy some Ponte, either in a gray or a brown. I'll have to look and see what's what's there and what's available. And I'm going to make the Maker's Atelier uh, knit pants. So I showed these to you in my intentions for October and the um, stretch denim jeans that I bought there which just wasn't enough fabric and so I didn't end up making those so I am going to make those this month in a Ponte and I actually think that will be a better fabric for it anyway so that will work well. And then I'm going to make a gallery tunic uh, and I'm going to find a nice sort of bright fabric for that something with a little personality to it. I love this pattern. I've made it a bunch of times. I'm actually going to use it for the socialists as one of my TNT patterns and I'm going to TNT standing for tried and true. I'm going to do an, um, a video next week about my tried and true patterns and if you have some, it's down below. I love tried and true patterns, things that I know will work and that are awesome. So I'm using the gallery tunic for that and I have one that I made that you'll see later this week in my October makes and I forgot how much I loved it. It's such a great pattern. So I definitely want to make one more of those because it's just so easy and just effortless, effortlessly chic as far as I'm concerned. Okay, and then next, like I said, sweater. So I just want to be encased in cozy coziness from now until the snow goes away. I'm Canadian, but I do not like winter. I just don't. I don't hate me if you will, but I, I could do with like three weeks of snow and a bright blue sky and then back to spring if it were up to me. But I put up with winter because I love autumn and spring and um, I just need to get through it as warm as possible. So if you saw my fabric haul video um, from Blackbird Fabrics, I got this beautiful blushy beige. It's called blushy beige sweater knit. It's called cloud sweater knit. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure it's sold out, but um, I can show you here the right side, how pretty. It's very light. I might even double it up. I have two and a half meters of this and I'm doing a sweater dress. I'm doing a, you know, as long as I possibly can um, sweater dress out of this. And I'm going to use the toaster pattern because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And that toaster pattern works for me. You probably saw my video with the three toasters. Um, it's going to come up again in my makes video for September. Uh, it's just a great pattern and I'm also going to use that for the one pattern one week challenge by um, Soisfaction. Oh, I hope it's Soisfaction. <laughs> I think it's Soisfaction. <laughs> I'm going to use it for, for them and I'm, I'll link that below as well. So I like the idea of combining these challenges with something that I actually want to make rather than just picking something new to make just to fit into a challenge, right? There's no reason why you can't combine the two. So I'm going to do that. And then I have this red sweater knit also from Blackbird Fabrics. They still have this not in this color. So I'll link to one of the other colors. Um, they call it the Mélange Rouge. Uh, it's a little bit heavier and I am going to make a Blackwood cardigan out of this. That's for sure. And at least I think it's for sure. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> I don't like saying for sure because I might change my mind in the moment. Um, but it's a good weight for that. And I do want to add a little more color to my wardrobe. And I do think that um, I would really use a Blackwood cardigan because I wear just a lot of long sleeve t-shirts black gray navy and red would look great over top any of those so I'm definitely going to do that and then another of the sweater same as that blushy beige except in gray and for this I'm going to do the Paula um, turtleneck because I do want some turtlenecks and actually the only thing I'm tempted to buy is a classic merino black turtleneck like the really like nice and tight one um, that's really snug but I'm gonna make this one first and I'm gonna see how it looks and how the pattern is and if if it goes well then I will just find the right um, ribbed merino and I'll, I'll make one for myself but I'm gonna start off with this and the last thing is and this black is awful on camera so I'm gonna hold this back here this is just a black um, stretch velvet dress that I got at Salvation Army for five dollars and I'm using this as a wearable toile for my Christmas dress because I don't know exactly what I want to do yet and I think it'd be nice to do something in velvet. I want to pick something out of this book and if you saw my um, workroom 10th anniversary fabric haul video I flipped through the entire thing so you can have a look at that but how often do we buy these beautiful books and then they just sit on the shelf and we never make anything out of them if they just they just look pretty they just sit there and look pretty. No, we're going to put it to work. I'm going to pick something. I'm going to make it. Darn it. Yes. 
So that is all for today. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please comment below and let me know if there's anything else that you'd like to see this month. I've got some plans, but I'm all there's I'm always open to suggestions. Um, and please subscribe. I'm so enjoying putting up videos for you once, maybe twice a week, maybe more. We'll see what comes up. Um, right now, I just have so many ideas and it's just about getting it all sewn so I can show it to you. So in a few days, I will be putting up my October makes. I did pretty well there. I didn't get everything done, but I got most of it done. And there's a, maybe one or two surprises in there as well. So thanks again. I hope you have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye.